Well, we're joined now by Maoz Inon. He's an Israeli peace activist who calls for a two-state solution. He joins us now live from Tel Aviv. Thank you so much for your time today. What is your reaction to this move by Spain, Ireland and Norway to recognize a Palestinian state? Chris, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to speak with you and uh, with Al Jazeera. Uh, before uh, congratulation, I think, Norway, Belgium, Ireland and Spain, I would like to say to share the discourse within Israel and to differentiate the Israeli people from the, the Israeli government. The Israeli government mission and vision is the Jewish supremacy between the river and the sea. And this is what they are doing. They were doing it before October the 7th and they are more uh, uh, with more power and victims they are doing it since then. And while what's the Israeli uh, population and people are looking for and are in a desperate need, especially after the trauma of October 7, which in this trauma also lost my parents. I lost both my parents. They were victims of the Hamas attack, the, among the first victims, and I lost many of my childhood friends. We are traumatized. And what we care about is only security and safety. While our government care about Jewish supremacy, we care about security and safety. And what was proven in the past between Israel and Egypt, Israel and Jordan, that the only way to reach security and safety is reaching a diplomatic solution and to sign a peace accord between nation, between states. And the only way to achieve peace between Israel and Palestine and achieve security and safety to Israeli people and of course to the Palestinian people, because there will be no security and safety to one without the other, is by signing a peace accord and a, and a diplomatic solution to the war. So no. I would like to congratulate uh, those European nations for recognizing the state of Palestine. Uh, and Moaz, uh, we often do hear that most Israelis blame Netanyahu's government for what happened on October the 7th. Yet we, are, we still appear to see the support for his policies in Gaza. How do you explain that? Again, he, we were hijacked. Both people were hijacked by extremist leaders. And this is why the international intervention in promoting and supporting peace, reconciliation, shared acknowledgement and recognition is so important. And this is why those brave, courageous European nation that I will hope this uh, step will be uh, followed uh, by other uh, uh, nation that hasn't uh, decided yet, uh, this is the only way, the only way to stop the war, the only way to release the hostages and the Palestinian prisoners, and the only way to bring security and safety between the river and the sea. And you mentioned earlier, you yourself tragically lost your parents on October the 7th. Uh, briefly, perhaps you could tell us what happened and how that has influenced your actions uh, as a peace activist today. Um, my parents lived in, in a small community, the closest Israeli community to the border in Gaza and a gliding terrorist just uh, flew over, over the wall that was uh, uh, walling between Gaza and my uh, parents' community. And uh, they landed near the house in 7.30. And in 7.50, we lost uh, contact with my parents. And later uh, in that uh, same uh, Black Saturday in the afternoon, we learned that my parents' house was burned to ashes with my uh, both parents in it. And we started the Shiva, the Jewish way of mourning. And in the second day of the Shiva, my young brother, we are uh, four siblings, my young brother asked us to send a universal message from our own personal tragedy. And he wanted this message to be that we are not seeking a revenge. We want to break the cycle of revenge, of bloodshed, of hate and war. And the only way to do it will be by, by creating a future, by envisioning a better future for both people. And this is what I've been doing for the last eight months. I've been, I've been doing it uh, 10 days ago 
with my Palestinian friend and partner, Aziz Abu Sarah, uh, when the Pope Francis invited us to Verona, to a huge peace event, Arena de Pacha, with 12,000 peace builders from all over Europe and all over the world. And we are doing it in building a coalition of Palestinian Israelis from Gaza, from Israel, from the West Bank, from the diaspora that are envisioning a better future. A better future that is based on shared acknowledgement and recognition, reconciliation and healing, security and safety, equality and dignity. And we are working very, very hard to promote this future we are calling the G7 state. Ne later, uh, next month in June, there is a, a summit of the G7 state leader. They must address the issue of promoting peace and promoting a better future for both Israelis and Palestinians, because it's, it's evidence that our current leaders from both sides are offering us no hope and no future. They are promising us that the future would look like the present. And I was listening to you uh, before uh, I went, uh, uh, I, I went uh, uh, online and I was crying. I was crying, I was crying because we must end the bloodshed. We must end it and we must act now because if we won't do it, I'm afraid we're gonna reach the numbers of Rwanda. There will be one million victims between the river and the sea. Why to wait? Why to make to wait for so much suffering, so much agony, so much trauma. We must end it now, and we must promise and, and walk to, to bring and make a better future for all people. Mao Zanon, thank you so much for sharing your views here on Al Jazeera. Mao an Israeli peace activist speaking to us there from Tel Aviv. Thank you very much. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.